this is Bethany, and I want to thank you for joining me for Rooftops podcast today. My hope and prayer is that this is going to encourage you and it's going to challenge you, uh, activate your faith as you hear God speak to your heart. So today we're going to be talking about true understanding. Have you ever been the last to know something, the last to find out something, something big, something important? That's not really a good feeling. At least for me, I don't like that anyhow. I don't want to be left in the dark. I want to know what's up. I want to know the truth about matters. I want to have true understanding. So I want to share an example with you um, that came to my mind when I was thinking about having true understanding. And um, it was 20 goodness, probably 25 years ago at this point, um, before I met my husband, I was actually um, getting ready to get engaged to marry another man. And I was so convinced that I was supposed to be with him, that we were meant for each other. I was so, so for sure on this. Um, I thought that I knew what I wanted and what I needed. And I was even saying things to God like, please just let us be together forever. You know, that kind of thing. And, and I think about that now and it's so ridiculous because I didn't even have a real relationship with God at the time. I think I was just kind of using him as a genie or ATM machine, hoping that he would answer me. Because I wasn't concerned about God's will for my life at all at that point. I only wanted what I wanted. And so the guy ended up turning out to be a completely different person than who I thought he was and it ended in a really bad heartbreak for me. Just my heart was shattered in the whole thing. But I look back now and actually so many times I've thought back to this and I thank God that he did not answer my prayer, that God had a different plan for me, that he had something better in mind that I could have never imagined or even put together. And so now I have the man of my dreams. I couldn't ask for a better husband, a best friend, a ministry partner. He's a wonderful father to our girls. But my point is this, is I was so convinced, so sure that I knew what was best, that, um, that relationship could have totally wrecked my life and it would have changed the whole trajectory of my life. So how about you? Is, is there been a time where you've been convinced that you knew what was best, you knew what you wanted only to find out that it wasn't the best thing for you? I think we probably have all been there. Um, I want to read Matthew 17 verses one through five. It says, now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with them. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But in verse five, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him, exclamation point, right? So here we have this experience where where Jesus takes three of his his closest disciples to have this experience with him um, that's glorious, right? He's just transformed before their very eyes. And in the middle of that, Peter pipes up and he's like, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles or or three dwellings for you, uh, for Moses and for Elijah. I'm sure Peter was thinking, I could get used to this. I, I could stay here forever. And I was thinking about this and asking myself the question, um, and, and I'll ask you as well, have you ever tried to tell the Lord what was good before? Like, God, do it this way because this would work out great. I could totally see this happening. I love this. This is good, God. So I'm not blaming Peter because I probably would have said something um, the same way that Peter said it. Because clearly it really was an amazing experience that they were having with the Lord. And so it really just seemed natural. It seemed right that that Peter would want to hang out longer there, that he would be spot on, you know, to, to say what he said. But again, verse five indicates otherwise. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the clouds saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. 
So basically, God just interrupts Peter mid-thought. It's like God was almost saying to Peter, shh, zip it. Like, stop talking, Peter. Stop trying to figure out, stop trying to strategize how to manage and control this situation. Instead, just listen. Just listen to my son. And again, I'm not judging Peter because I I think that there's probably this tendency in all of us where um, we think we know what's best at times when we really just don't. We don't have a true understanding uh, of maybe what God intends. And Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. So the job of our heart is not to give us understanding or direction. The role of our heart is to trust God and placing our confidence in our own intellect or our own logic is dangerous because we're so limited of the big picture. Only God can see the big picture and our feelings and our thoughts, no matter how real they are, they're not always the will of God. In Jeremiah 17, 9, says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? So we can't trust our heart, but we can trust God. And we don't have to know all the answers when we know the one who does. And so the key, I think, to trusting God is knowing, being convinced that he has our best interest at mind, that that he's not keeping anything good from us. He's not putting us in a situation or allowing us to go through something to harm us or to hurt us. For me, I've been uh, learning from the Lord and um, learning about the Lord for close to 24 years now. And I feel like I've just scratched the surface of how great he is. The continued discovery of who he is, is It's a joy and it's a delight in my life because I keep finding out that he's better than even I realized. And I know he's good, but I keep finding out he's even better than what I thought he was. So I would say if there's any empty space in life left with question marks, that those blanks should be filled in with faith in the one who loves us and the one who died for us. And when we trust him, we're able to rest. He's got it all figured out. He's going to bring it all together. I love the way that God always ties up the loose ends. I'm always amazed as I sit back and just see how God brings things full circle. If you just give him time, you'll get to have some of these moments in life where you're just in awe because you you see God crosses all of his T's and he dots all of his I's. He just pulls it all together. He uses all the details, everything that, that we've went through, everything we're going to go through to work something so wonderful out, something beyond our imagination. So there is this pressure that can come on us when we think that we have to come up Um, with life's problems, with solutions, that we need to be the one to think of new ideas for this or for that, or uh, really like Peter, sometimes we just need to be interrupted by God. Sometimes I know I need to stop thinking about my own ideas and just listen to what God is trying to say to me, what he's already said, even in his word. It's interesting who showed up with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. It was Moses and Elijah, which symbolized, represented the the law and the prophets, which again, really symbolizes the words of God. And then you have Jesus, who is the living word of God. And the father is saying, listen to him. Okay, so I think by looking at this scenario, we can gather that we do. We need to direct our attention to the Word of God and not our own ideas because the Word of God is so reliable throughout all the ages. This is how we can navigate through unsure times in our lives. We can stick to the Word of God. We can be led by His Spirit. We listen and the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and guidance. Uh, The Bible tells us that, that we can ask God for wisdom and he gives it liberally. It's through the word of God that the lies of the enemy are exposed and we can see the truth. It's also through the word of God that our own motives are revealed. Uh, The Bible tells us that that God's word is a discerner of our thoughts and, and the intentions of our very heart. And it's through the word of God that God's will becomes clear. It, 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 it becomes in focus to us. And that's important because not everything in this world is so clear. It's really quite tricky. Many times things are not the way they seem. 
In uh, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, God says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So if his thoughts are higher than his thoughts, if his ways are higher than our ways, then unless he reveals himself to us and his will to us, we're not going to know what's up. We're not going to know right from wrong, um, left from right. This is why it's so important for us to seek the Lord. Because in any given situation, there are usually many different influences, um, many different sources influencing a situation. And so it's important to have discernment to know what's what, right? Because real life can be messy. And it's usually because there is a mixture of things going on all at once. And it gets hard to to tell what's what. When one of my daughters um, was young, we would have her clean her room and we would come in only to find um, she had lumped all of her things together in like one tote or in a pile and shoved it under the bed or or in the closet. And we would come in and we would tell her, no, that's not how you do it. You got to go through it. You need to sort it out to know where it belongs and where its proper place is. And I found this can be so true of life that Sometimes it's easier just not to deal with the ne- uh, the mess, like beneath all of the layers and not to put things in their proper place, if you will. Have you ever known people that go through difficulty in life and it can be a minor difficulty, like they can hit a pot hole and a lot of us are hitting potholes it seems this uh, these days with the the winter storms we've had but hit a pothole on your way to work and uh just assign blame to the devil like it's always the devil's fault devil here devil there devil everywhere type of a deal and it's true absolutely we do have an enemy but he's not the only one in the mix we're also in the equation um and it's important to ask what part what part do I have to play in this, right? Um, taking re- personal responsibility for our lives, for where we're at, um, thinking about how am I responding in this situation? Even if the enemy is trying to get in there and, 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 and mess some things up in your life, how are you responding? People can even um, assign ownership to God for something that's happened that's not God at all, um, that is contrary to the, the will or character of God. But just try to spiritualize what they're doing or what they're involved in, you know, and, or maybe even the the enemies confused you and you think something is God, but it's not. Um, the good news though is, is that God is in the equation also, and he's always up to something good. And so we can ask ourselves, am I submitting to him? How can I partner with him to fulfill what he wants to do through this situation in my life? So again, as we stay in God's word, as we let the Holy Spirit guide us, we'll have discernment and we won't be misguided by the devil's deception, by our own feelings or our our thoughts or even just our own reasoning. I want to leave us with a final verse in Romans 12 too. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So like Peter's experience, let's be open to and even welcome God to come and interrupt our ideas and our feelings and rather lean in and learn how to rely on what God says. So I hope you enjoyed today. I hope it blessed you. Thanks again so much for joining Rooftops.